He's supposed to be yeah. 30. And like, honestly, that kind of works. It's like, this is a 30 year old. Boxing is bad for you. He, does not, he looks not a day over 50 in this. Yeah, Stu is a 30-year-old, 49-year-old prospect and a 270-pound, 156-pound fighter. It's sort of a quantum problem that makes you believe in the miracles of Catholicism. So, boxing career cut short. Uh, his, his mom, played by Jackie Weaver, says, you know, hey— why don't you get a job on an oil rig? And he's like, I can't do that blue collar bullshit. I'm going to be move to Hollywood and become an actor. You know, as you do, like the, the, the only thing, the only thing that's a longer shot than becoming a, like a, a championship boxer at past your thirties is becoming a, a working actor. But you know, Stu, he doesn't want a real job. He wants to be, you know, he wants, he wants an easy job. And I, I really think that like early on, like, like, be, like his, his desire to be an actor is very much connected to his desire to be a priest. Because let's be honest, he doesn't want a real job. He does not exactly. want. A, he he doesn't it, want a he, nine to five. Says, I don't want to do some blue collar shit. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the quest to avoid <laughs> honest work, which I honestly <laughs> really really related. To. <laughs> mm-hmm. Where where is this supposed to take place? Because like for the first, I think it's Montana. Yeah, the which first. Is what, yeah. Which his decision to do like a twangy southern accent is so well, baffling. He said one word that sounded like southern, and I was like, "Oh, this doesn't take place in Boston." Yeah, <laughs> it really <laughs> it weirded me out. I'm so used to him doing a Boston accent yeah. that I, 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 I still thought it took place in Boston for the first ten minutes or so. He's like, he, he, "Where the where the fuck did you put my spittoon?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His accent. He's attempting a southern accent in Helen Mon- Helena Montana, but like. If evil Eric Elper put a gun to my head and played that voice for me and was like, what region is that accent from? I would say <laughs> lone survivor of a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he sounds like he's undercover. He does a really bad job of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, an- an- another important thing about Father Stu's backstory is, of course, that uh, the tragic death of his younger brother, who he describes as going to sleep to take a nap and never waking up when he was like seven years old. So yeah, he they, already has a, a tortured relationship with uh, faith in God, which is demonstrated by him getting drunk, visiting his brother's grave, and then punching a statue of Jesus Christ in the face <laughs> and, 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 and hurting his hand very badly before being arrested for resisting arrest. This is one of many uh, DUIs and resisting arrest charges that Father Stu has to take on his road to uh, you know, Golgotha. I love when he like is visiting his bro- his dead brother's grave or whatever, and they show kind of it's like one of those things where it's kind of a flashback, but like he the brother is like t- talking to him or whatever, and I think it's the only thing that the dead brother says in the movie. But he's like, "You're basically better than me in every way. You're the better <laughs> brother." <laughs> Wrong kid died. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Dude, I thought when the Jesus guy shows up at the bar, I thought that was supposed to be his brother. I couldn't what? figure out. What are you? I, what? Well, you are so. What is wrong with you? He looks exactly, looks exactly like Jesus. I don't know. I thought it was supposed to be his brother growing up. I couldn't follow this fucking movie at all. Oh my I didn't understand God. a goddamn thing that was happening in this fucking this movie. This is the most straightforward, boring movie I've ever seen. Literally nothing happens. How could you be confused about what was going on? I had a. I told you I had a voodoo ranger. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This movie is very. I in the first five minutes of this movie, there are two flashbacks that, like, really the only reason you would need for them to do flashbacks is to like establish that Stu was once a child. It's like a hallmark <laughs> of stupid filmmaking. So, uh, so yeah, Stu, uh, you know, you know, sort of like against his 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 mother's wishes, who who warns him about going to to Holly Weird, California, because she says it's full of communist fascists. <laughs> and and hippie communist fascists and you know like you won't fit in there, Stu. But you know, uh, Stu, like you know, like when his doctor says, like if you take another blow to the head, you could die. He's like, fuck that shit. I'm I'm I, I never back down from a fight. I, I've been fighting my whole life. I, I'm a I'm a keep fighting. I'll die fighting. So he takes that same that same gumption and get all get all out resolve and takes it with him to Hollywood, California, to become a movie star. 
And like I said, he is immediately um, basically uh, me too'd by a uh, a guy who wants him to like I don't know what? hold this sign on Hollywood it's, Boulevard it's an or attempted something. Me too because it's the same thing, the same Mark Wahlberg thing as as he has with nine eleven, where he heard the me too stories and he was like, well, if I was there, <laughs> it would have been done completely differently. That's that that exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, very funny from-, from the point of view of the me too guy who's this pencil neck casting director or something and it's and he's like well what what will you do for the part and he's not talking to some 19 year old twink like this is rough trade ass looking mark (laughs) Wahlberg. yeah you're really rolling the dice here man a guy way bigger than him (laughs) who has like uh, who has like puerto rican guy's blood on his knuckles yeah yeah, he came in and he was like oh yeah my my i'm auditioning because i am i'm a violent boxer who's killed everybody i fought Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah, he stands up. He stands up to Hollywood sickos. But that uh, and then like and so like he 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 buys his time uh working um uh at the at the meat counter of a supermarket. You know, very 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 much I think a tribute to uh Mickey Rourke and the wrestler. Indeed, yes. You know, yeah. He uh he's he's packing meat for people. Um and that's where he gets his first sort of um Saul on the road to Damascus moment. He's struck by the blinding light of a really hot Latina. And then he immediately um, begins to like stalk her, and uh, the the way into this woman's heart, of course, like all hot Latinas, is the Catholic Church, and he starts showing up at uh, her church to like ask her on a date, and like that's his first. I, I mean, I, I I interpreted this movie as like him going to like a church on Sunday to try to get a date with this woman is like the first time his character has even heard of Christianity. <laughs> yeah he's like a he's like a pre-christian like pagan savage like he was raised under varg's religion of worshiping trees and Lord of the rings was it like uh uh like a, when, when one of like the 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 frankish uh kings uh was first told the story of jesus christ like after he had converted he was just like if I had 30 of my brave Frankish warriors with me, we would have killed the entire Roman Empire. It was the RX nephew thing. Why didn't no one jump out? They, they could have helped him. <laughs> they could have helped him in Jerusalem. And then, and this is this is very much Father Stu's attitude. I mean, he, he like he's just like you know, uh, he he goes to her because he wants a date. He wants a date. Um, but you know, uh, his his uh, you know, um, his standing up to me too sickos that does not prevent him from getting a nationally televised uh, uh, commercial spot uh, advertising some sort of mop. On, uh, on on television, so you know, like I said, he he's got a can-do attitude, and despite his obvious lack of talent and social skills, it's a lesson here. Just like when people tell you no, just just like for a date, uh, for, for becoming a priest, for being an actor, just keep going with it. Just, just just don't take no for an answer. And you know, like he he perseveres. He perseveres in getting a date. He perseveres in getting on TV, and eventually he will persevere in becoming a priest. Yeah, one of my favorite parts when he goes to the to the church for the first time is that he meets a guy named Ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah the first yeah. black guy he's never punched in the face, and yeah. he's yeah. They become he becomes his closest confidant. Closest mm-hmm. confidant, but then any time that he can in the movie, he brings up the fact that he's black. Yeah, yeah. which is like, dude, he's it's like, way crazier that his name is Ham. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a, a a scene in the movie where they're playing like, oh, I don't know if I'm skipping ahead too much, but they're playing basketball, and he's just like, bro, I'm out of shape. And you're black. <laughs> <laughs> it is wild. He goes when he meets him. He goes ham. And he's like ham, and he's like yeah. It's a it's a it's from the Bible, and it's like yeah. That's like the guy who got cursed. <laughs> like that's what like slave owners used to claim. Like oh yeah, black people are they got the curse of ham on them, and he's like yeah, that's ham. Yeah, I'm a ham who got cursed. <laughs> yeah, it is so funny. Well, there's one point the hams you couldn't curse. <laughs> there's one point later in the movie too where like ham calls somebody and leaves a voicemail on the on the answering machine that's like hey this is ham i like i would i would save that voicemail Just forever Mark Wahlberg's black friend <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, these are just my black friends. These are my black friends. Hamburger and fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it was short for hamburger. That yeah, makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's hamburger Junior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so basically, uh, Father Stu's um, indoctrination into the uh, the Catholic Church is at the hands of, like I said, this uh, 
this this nice uh, uh, Mexican woman who uh, he has fallen for, and like she's the one that's going to take him into being like a good. And but but you know she says her parents can't date anyway. You know he, can't, he says she can't date anyone who's not baptized. So he's like, I'll do that shit right now. Get the water, you know. <laughs> Before the, uh, he, he thinks he, he's like, I'll drink the bottle of water right now. I love drink. I love water. I love being hydrated. Give it to me. <laughs> the part where he like meets her family is so awesome, dude. Oh That's yeah. Just, it's just like. Just like the the dad just giving him nothing, dude. But then he has that one magic line, and he just makes the dad laugh, and you know he's about to eat that girl's pussy. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dad is like, you know, where I come from, uh, people crawl on their hands and knees for miles to like, you know, kiss the feet of the statue of the the Holy Virgin de Guadalupe or whatever, and and Mark Wahlberg zinger to like, you know, just just put this nice Catholic family at ease that he's not just some ex-boxer wannabe actor shithead who's trying to, you know, uh, desecrate their daughter's uh, purity uh, for his own um, uh, lustful ends is that he says, it's a good thing my house has carpeting. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like awkward silence, and then the dad's like, ah, you got me! (laughs) 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 You've disarmed me completely, Stu. Father Stu really has a way with words. He, at one point I remember he says, I'm not gay and God's not a gangster. And that line really <laughs> stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, Stu has a uh, Stu has like the patter and outward narration of his own life, very similar to Walt Tremblay of E1. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not all hot Mexican women and and fun on the road to becoming a Catholic because there are people who stand in your way. And I want to talk about my favorite character in this movie, the antagonist to Mark Wahlberg's hip priest. The gay priest. <laughs> and like, you know, like when, he, when he's trying to be baptized and like join, join the faith and then, and then join the priesthood, he is sort of um, uh, beset at every step by this very like kind of persnickety, finely combed hair, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, just sort of like kiss ass, wannabe Catholic. Who, it's like, a you Draco know, Malfoy priest. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He has like he has like perfect porcelain skin, big dick sucking lips. He's a, a clear gay villain, <laughs> and he's a nerd. Like he doesn't have you know uh, Malberg. He's he's just going with it. He's just riding Jesus's vibe. But this guy's over there. He's not playing basketball. He's fucking reading the goddamn yeah. books all the time. And you know, like as as Father Stu says to, to 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 his antagonist, he says like even God doesn't like a kiss ass. And it's like yeah, that's right. Like who 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 are who are God's strongest warriors? Is it the people studying the book all the time, or is it the is it the men who are in the world who 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 have the blood of Puerto Ricans on their hands <laughs> and are yeah. seeking to deflower uh, nice Mexican women? The men brave enough to fall over on every single floor and surf 